Hello my YouTube friends! You can create some awesome face cams like these for your live streams in Streamlabs. And today I'm going to show you how to do it totally free. So let's get to it! My goal on this channel is to make folks better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So take a second and leave me a comment down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're down there, leave a thumbs up. It really goes a long way to help YouTube push this video to a wider audience. And if you're not subscribed, please do. That goes a long way towards helping me continue to make content that helps you. And it's totally free, so thanks. Every live streamer video needs some sort of good music, right? But how do you find good music for free that's not gonna get you strikes to your live streams or your video? Today's sponsor, StreamTunes, is the answer. Now, StreamTunes is a 100% free platform of high quality DMCA safe music. And it's always free, no strings attached, no bogus signups, nothing, just free. Not only that, but StreamTunes is available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and most, if not all, streaming services, including YouTube Music. And they have a library of more than 800 songs, and it's growing by the day. Another really cool part about StreamTunes is that every time you play their songs on any of the services, a donation is made to Music Counts. And this charity helps to keep music programs going in high schools all over Canada. And that's just awesome. Be sure to check out StreamTunes for yourself. There is a link in the description. And like I said, it's totally 100% percent free. We're gonna have to use some free software to create our face cam. It's called Pixlr and it's really easy. The links are in the description so you can check it out and follow along. Here we are in Pixlr and we've created a canvas the size of our live stream. I'm gonna select down here on the left the shapes and then I'm gonna select a custom shape up here in the top and we're gonna select this star and I'll just click off of this and I'm gonna change the color of my fill on the star to white because that's what you want your mask color to be and then I'm just gonna drag my star out and if I hold down the shift key I can make sure that it draws out correctly. Then all I really want to do is center this up and then I'm going to go to file and save and I'm going to title my mask and click download and next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a second mask. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger so it fills the screen just a bit more. I'm going to once again center it up then I'm going to go to file and save. I'm going to call this one a different thing so I know it's my second mask. Click download and then I'm going to do that once again. Instead of actually changing the size I'm going to rotate this just a little bit and then center it up as best I can. And this isn't really a star shape, it's more blobular, but this will work just fine for what I'm trying to do. So once I have it rotated and placed in the proper location, or at least as close as I can get it, I'm just gonna go up to file and save, and I'm gonna call this one another name. In this case, mask three, because we've created three of these. So let's try another one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a full HD scene, because that's the size I stream at. I'm gonna name it and click create. And this time, we're going to just select a different shape here. We're gonna drop down the shape box, and and let's select this spiky one here and I'm gonna just click off. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just drag, holding down the left mouse button and the shift key. And we're gonna create our shape. I'm just gonna move it into position, centered. And that looks great. That's exactly what we're looking for, easy. And then I'm just gonna go up to file and save. And actually, I'm just gonna go to file and export and export PNG. And then it's gonna export it with the name mask. Now I'm gonna just rotate this a little bit and I'm gonna go once again up to file and export. And this will end up with the export name of mask too, but it's a little bit faster. Just file, export, and export as a PNG. You want to export it as a PNG so it saves the alpha. And let's create a third mask. Of course, this is the same 1920 by 1080. I'm going to change my shape here. We're going to try out one of these flaming ones that are here at the bottom. Looks like a flaming birthday cake. We'll select that. We'll click off and then we'll go ahead and drag our shape. I'm not going to hold the shift key on this one because I want to be able to kind of move the edges around so I get the shape that I want. Once I have what I'm looking for, I just let go of the button and I'm going to drag this over and center it up as best I can. Then I'm just going to go up to file and export and I'm going to save this out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slightly larger version. So I'm just going to drag the edges. And in this case, I'm going to hold that shift key so we keep, you know, about the same shape and same size. We don't want to change it too much. Then I'm going to just drag this and move it totally into the center. And that looks good. I'm just going to go up and file, export, export 
for it is PNG once again. And I'm gonna do one more thing. I wanna, I wanna flip this horizontally. So I'm gonna go to layer, I'm gonna go to rasterize layer, and then I'm gonna go to image and image rotation, and I'm gonna flip it horizontally. There we go. Then I'm just gonna go up to file and export. We're gonna export as a PNG. Now let me show you how to set these scenes up in Streamlabs. Here in Streamlabs, we're gonna go ahead and rename our scene, and I'm gonna use a nested scene, so I'm gonna call it an NS face cam and click done. Then I'm gonna click the plus under sources and I'm gonna go to video capture device. And we're gonna load in our camera. So I'm gonna just call this one camera and add our source. We'll drop this down and select the proper source, in this case, cam link. And we're gonna go to custom, make sure our resolution is proper. And we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and click use custom audio device and we'll select the microphone that we want to use. And there we go. So now our camera is all set up. Perfect. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to filters and add filter. And then I'm just going to click this plus and you can see image mask blend is the one we want. So click OK. And then I'm going to browse and I'm going to select one of the masks that we created. In this case, we'll select this spiky one right here and we're all good there. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a media source and we'll just call this media source animation. And then I'm going to click add source. I'm gonna go to browse and I'm gonna select one of these background files that just kind of moves around. I'm gonna loop that file and click open and there we go. So now we have that. I can right click on that one and go to effects and filters and then click the plus. We're gonna select image mask. We're gonna go to browse and we're going to select that second spike file and there we go. So now we have a pretty cool looking face cam. We're gonna click the plus under scenes and we're gonna build another scene. We're gonna call this one video. So it's going to be NS video. It's going to be another nested scene. And then I'm going to click the plus under sources and we're going to add a media source. And I'm going to use the slider here so we can add a new media source. I'm going to call this one video and click add source. Then I'm going to browse to a video file I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and loop that video file and click done. Now I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go back to filters and we're going to add a filter. I'll click the plus button. We're going to add a mask. I'm going to browse to the mask that I want to use. I'm going to use this page one. It's another one that you can create in Pixlr if you want. Click done. So now you can see this looks like a piece of parchment. We're going to click the plus again and we're going to go to media source and add a source and we're going to slider and we'll add a background to this. We'll just call it background and add source. Then I'm going to click browse, select another one of our little video files. We'll loop that file and I'm going to drag it below our video, right click on it, go into filters and edit filters. We're going to click the plus and we're going to go ahead and add the image mask again and I will browse and we're going to select another one of those parchment ones a little bigger than the other one and I'm just going to adjust it right here on this side make it a touch smaller and look at that that looks pretty cool so now I'm going to add a third scene and we're going to call this scene intermission and I'll click done and this is where we're going to start to put everything together so I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to go to scenes and then I'm just going to select the scene we'll start with the face cam and there we go our face cam is in here we just need to shrink it up and then I'm going to click the plus again and I'm going to go to scenes and I'm going to go ahead and add that video scene and click add source and there we go. So now we've added these two scenes in here. I'm just going to size them up, move them around, get them the way that I want. And that looks awesome. I'm going to click the plus here and we're going to go to a media source and I'm going to add the source. And in this case, I'm going to add this background and click add source. And now I can just shrink this up and I'm going to put it over here and I just want to kind of fit it in. I'm going to resize it a little bit and there we go. Now I'm going to hold the shift key and just drag this over and that allows us to change the ratio on it so it kind of makes it look pretty cool. There we go. So now we have a little box for our chat, which is awesome. And we'll just make this a little bigger. And there we go. Got a chat box. Everything looks pretty cool. This is the beginnings of a great scene. And the way that you would finish this scene out is with adding maybe a little bit of text. So we'll click the plus and we'll go into our text GDI tool and click add source. And we'll just call this text intermission and click add source. And I'm going to go ahead and select a font that I like and I'm just going to type intermission here in the text box. Under text transform I'm going to make it all uppercase and then I'm just going to adjust the colors here and we want part of this to be green but I want to add a gradient as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this and we're going to make this green. 
right here. And that makes the bottom green, which isn't exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna right click and go back into properties. And we're gonna go ahead and adjust the first color and we'll make this a green. And we'll adjust the gradient color and we'll make this a little bit of like a yellow brownish color. And there we go, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna go ahead and select outline. And I'm just gonna bump up our outline a little bit, make it a little fatter. And there we go, click done. And I'm gonna stretch this out so that it takes the location and place it's about the size that we want. But it's kind of blurry, I don't like how that looks. I'm gonna resize the box behind it, use the arrow keys to move it around. And I just don't like how fuzzy the text looks. So I'm gonna go into the text properties and I'm gonna actually increase the font size by quite a bit. And you can see what that does is it makes it a lot less blurry and now we just need to shrink it down to the size that we want. So just keep in mind that you definitely want to adjust the size of your text to the size you're looking for and if you have to shrink text it's going to definitely be sharper than having to make it bigger and there we go that looks pretty good and I just want to adjust the colors on our text again so I'm gonna right click and go to properties and we'll come down here and I'm just gonna make the green a little bit darker and that looks pretty cool and I like that, that looks great. So now we created all these other masks for our face cam. All we have to do is right click and we can go into filters and we can just change the mask. In this case, we're changing the mask for the camera. We'll use this one right here, the flaming one. And I can right click on the animation and go to the masks and edit up the mask right here. And we'll just change that out and there we go. And this one actually has a third mask created and we just flipped it. We're gonna go into media source and click add sources and we're gonna use the slider. And I'm gonna go ahead and browse and select the green video here. We're gonna loop it and click done. And we'll slide this below our other two pieces and right click on it and go into filters. And we're gonna go ahead and edit our filters and click the plus. Once again, we're gonna go into that mask filter, click done and just browse to the filter we want. In this case, it's the third one for our little flaming thing click done we can resize it so we can stretch these edges out a little bit and there we go that looks okay and now when we go back into intermission we can see that we have our new mask in there and this shows you that you can use any of these masks you can layer them up with video files to create animation and it's really easy on your computer as well so that's a really simple way let's finish this up and show you what the star one looks like we're gonna go in here and there we go we changed our camera filter to a star now we need to change our orange animation to the star and there we go and we have one more layer we have this bottom green animation we're gonna right click and we're gonna go in to edit the filters we're gonna just change that green layer up to the star and there we go now if we go back into intermission we can see the star in here we can move it around resize it and all that kind of stuff now the reason why you want to use nested scenes is because you can move this around as all one piece in the scene. And that makes it really easy. And there we go. If you wanna know more about how the text tools work in Streamlabs OBS, you should check this video out right here. And a big thanks to today's sponsor, StreamTunes. You can find a link to StreamTunes and all the other sponsors that support the channel in the sponsor section in the description below. Supporting the sponsors that help keep the lights on here in the studio is a great way to help me continue to make content that helps you. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.